Welcome back to another Mixed Reality tutorial and in this video I'm going to show you how to add shadows in Mixed Reality for your virtual object. As always if you'd like to support my work you can join us on Patreon to get access to exclusive tutorials and the source code of all of my projects. But without further ado let's get started. Okay so let me show you the first technique to add a nice shadow in Mixed Reality. So as you can see, I'm inside a very simple Mixed Reality project. This is the setup that I've shown in this tutorial on how to make a MetaQuest 3 game. But of course, this Mixed Reality shadow can work for any Mixed Reality project, not just on the MetaQuest 3. Okay, so for this first technique, I'm going to right click in the R key, go to 3D object and search for quad. So as the name suggests, this will create a quad in our scene. We can then rotate it, scale it down. There you go. And now what I'm going to do is get our cube, right click, go to copy and copy the position. We can then select back the quad, right click and select paste position. There you go. Now this will place the quad at the position of our cube. But now we can just press on W and place it a bit down below. There you go. Okay, so now that we've added a quad under this cube, the technique to add a shadow for this cube is actually to just simply create a blob texture that will just follow this cube. Now, in my case, as you can see, I have imported in my game this white circle fade texture that you will be able to download in the description below. Now, make sure to go on the texture properties and select alpha is transparency. Then we can go down below and click on apply. There you go. Now the texture appears correctly over there. Okay, so now how to use this texture to create a shadow effect under this cube. We can right click, go to create, material this will of course create a new material that we can call blob shadow beautiful and in my case i'm using the standard pipeline so i'm simply going to go to unlit transparent texture and as you can see this is an unlit transparent shadow that use both a texture and a base color so what we can do is drag the white circle fade over there beautiful now we can drag the blob shadow under here the quad that we made and there it is we can see the beautiful shadow appearing now but of course you can use now the base color to kind of thin the color to black you can also reduce here the transparency by changing the alpha value of the color but I think a value of 205 will be perfect. Okay, beautiful. Now, in the case that you are not using the standard pipeline, but the universal rendering pipeline, you can, of course, do a similar setup by going to URP, Unlit, then settings the materials to transparent, and just drag the texture over there in the same way. Okay, here you go. Now, let's try to see what this looks like. Okay, and here you go. As you can see, we can see here the blob shadow just under the cube. But right now we have a problem, of course, is that if we move the cube, well, the shadow doesn't follow. So let me show you how we can fix this. So, okay, so to fix this, we are going to make this quad follow the cube position, but always be projected on the ground. So let me click on add component and I'm going to write a script called place on ground there you go okay so on the script we are going to need five variables so be ready first we need of course a reference to the object that we want to follow so the cube in our case then we want a reference to a raycast distance there you go which will be the distance of the raycast to find the ground so for the raycast we need as well a layer mask that we can call layer mask and finally i'm going to add a public fold called radius because I actually lied to you, it's not a raycast that we are going to use, it is a sphere cast, which compared to uh, raycast needs a certain radius. There you go. Finally, the last parameter will be a vertical offset, which will help us to better place vertically the object. So let's maybe set it at first to 0 0.02 centimeters. Beautiful. And now I'm going to remove the start function, but in the update, let's do raycast hit, raycast hit. And then create a sphere cast that will be projected just down below the target object that we are trying to follow. So let's do bool has it equals physics dot sphere cast transform dot position radius vector three dot down out recast it and the last parameters will be the layer mask. Beautiful. Now if we have it something. Then we can use what we hit to place here this quad by doing transform.position equals new vector 3 
we can give on the x value the target dot position dot x on the z value we can do the same but with the z position of the target and here we are just missing the y component of uh, the transform dot position vector three and which will be our raycast hit dot point dot y value and which we can increment with our vertical offset. This way we'll be able to better place using the vertical offset the quad above or below something. Oh, and just before going back to Unity, I think I just made a mistake here. We want to start casting the sphere cast from the target position, not the transform position. So let's simply write target that position here instead. Oh, and of course, I did another mistake in this sphere cast. No, don't blame me. This function takes a lot of parameters. But anyway, I forgot to add here the raycast distance, of course. And we can add it just before here the layer mask. So let's simply write raycast distance. And now everything should work fine. We can now save our script and go back to Unity. There you go, after waiting for the script to compile, as you can see, we can now set this component by dragging first the cube for the target, because this is the thing that we want to follow. For the raycast distance, we can leave it to 2. And for the layer mass, this means the thing that we want to collide with. Now, in my case, I'm going to go at the top, click on layer, add layer, and add a layer which I will call ground. Because I, of course, want uh, to place the object on the ground. So let's say layer mask now to be only ground. Beautiful. Now for the radius, basically what we want is to give for the radius half of the real size of this cube. Now the size of this cube is 0 0.08. So maybe we can do for the radius 0 0.04. There you go. And now everything is set up with these beautiful blob shadows and to make it follow our cube. Of course, the last thing we need to do is to just have something in our real world that we can collide with. Now, in my case, under the OVR Scene Manager, if you remember on my tutorial series on how to make a Mixed Reality MetaQuest 3 game, I use here this prefab, so a Global Mesh Collider, that actually maps to the real world around me. So what I'm going to do is select here this Global Mesh Collider, click on Global Mesh Collider, there you go, and set its layer to Ground. This way, the quad will be able to find it with the raycast as it has the layer mask ground and we will be able to place here these blob shadows on top. So only one way to find out and it is to build our game to test it. And there you go. As you can see, we can see our beautiful quad now under our cube. But most of all, if I move the cube, well, as you can see, vertically, the shadow stays in place, but I can move it around and it is correctly placed under at all time. This is awesome. And there you have it. So this was one of the two techniques to create our nice shadows in Mixed Reality. Now, of course, let me show you how to do the second technique, which will be a bit more precise. Now, if I go to Unity, then I right click, go to 3D object and then plane. As you can see, this creates a white plane that we can recenter at 0, 0, 0. And if we place it a bit down below, watch what happens. Of course, we have shadows that are drawn from the controller or the cube in this plane. But the issue is that the plane is still showing, of course. So how cool would it be if it was possible to actually hide the plane material but only show the color? And of course, it is possible using a custom shader. So the shader that we are going to use is this one. So the shadow receiver that you will be able to find in the description below. Now, I believe that this shadow receiver shader works for both a standard pipeline and URP. But if you want a more advanced shadow receiver for universal rendering pipeline, I highly recommend this asset. There is also a paid version that works with more than one directional light that you will be able also to find with an affiliate link in the description down below. Now, anyway, let me show you how to use it to only show the shadow over there. But first, a little side note, some of you might have some blurred shadow over there. Uh, you can actually increase the quality of the shadow by going for standard pipeline to edit, project settings, and then here click on quality. You can then remove all of the different settings, but keep ultra. And then if you go down below, you can set the shadow projection to close fit and reduce the shadow distance. And this should improve here the quality of your light. 
And by the way, if you are not using the standard pipeline but the universal rendering pipeline, I highly recommend this tutorial which will also show you how to improve the look of your shadow. Now, anyway, if we go back to our shadow receiver, I'm going to right click on the shadow receiver, go to create and then select material. This will create a material with the custom shadow receiver shader. And now if we drag this material onto the plane, as you can see, it is already working. Only here the shadow on the plane are appearing, not the material of the plane. Now with this shader, you can change here the color of the shadows and you can also change the opacity. Now, in my case, I will just leave it to this value, which I think are nice. But if I go to my directional light, I think I will probably just set the rotation to be 90, zero so that the shadow will appear directly under here each element. There we go. Next, to better test everything, I'm going to duplicate here the cube that we have and place it over there, right? And the first cube I'm going to go in is Mesh Renderer and make the cast shadow set to off. This way, we will be able to compare the two shadows, one using the blob shadow quad that we made and the other using here the shadow receiver plane. And there you go. Basically, that is it for the setup. But I think it should be better to actually use it not on any plane, but on the plane that is placed on our ground. So to do this, I'm going to select here this plane, press on delete to remove it. And then if I go to the OVR scene manager that I have on my project, if I click on the plus button here, I can select here the floor. There you go. This way, if now I click on the plane prefab, I can override here the plane prefab that will be used for the floor. So let's simply select the plane, press on Ctrl D, rename it plane shadow receiver. We can double click on this plane to open it because I'm going to select here the ZXY object and remove it. I don't want to show here uh, the little gizmo. I only want to have here this plane mesh renderer. And next, we are going to go to our custom shadow receiver material and drag it over there. And there we go. We can now go back here, select the OVR scene manager, select the invisible plane, but drag now the plane shadow receiver for the floor prefab. There you go. Now this way, the floor that will be used for scene model will have the plane shadow receiver to display the shadow of our game. That is awesome. Oh, and by the way, something that is very important, but that should be default. If we go to our plane shadow receiver by double clicking on it, then that you go on the mesh renderer. Make sure here that the lighting receive shadow is enabled. This will, of course, make it so that, well, this plane receives the shadows of your game, which is exactly what we want. Now, let's go back and build our game to find out if this is working. And there you go, guys. We can have a look at the two shadow system that we've made for Mixed Reality Game. On the right side, the blob shadow technique, which works great. And on the left side, the shadow receiver technique, which projects a shadow on the floor. Now, this is looking awesome. And as you can see, we can even have the shadow of our controller showing now. So everything is looking great. And this concludes, of course, this tutorial, which I hope that you enjoy. And of course, big shout out to my Patreon for supporting my work and which are the ones making it possible for me to make this video. Now, anyway, if like them, you want to get access to exclusive tutorials and the source code of all of my projects join us the link is in the description below thank you for watching and see you soon bye bye